Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, AMD gained and lost against Intel. Intel's high performance gaming GPU specs leak. AMD's DLSS competitor release date is finally here, and Ryzen 6000 APUs are everything you've been waiting for. Okay. It's news time and first up for today, according to new data from Mercury Research, AMD just gained its largest share of the server market since 2006. In fact, they grew 1.8 points to 8.9% in Q1, which means they grew a whopping 3.8 points from last year. According to the CTO of International Computer Concepts, Alexei Stolyar, he doesn't think AMD will make the same mistakes that they did in the past, thanks to the company's CEO, Lisa Su. With that said, AMD did lose some of its traction in the overall x86 market, as Intel gained one point this quarter. According to the report, that's thanks to an increase in lower-end parts like their Celeron CPUs mostly in the notebook market. Overall though, AMD is still up 5.9 points from the same time last year. That and it looks like AMD only lost in the lower-end parts while gaining in the high-end. Really, I think all eyes are on Intel's upcoming Alder Lake CPUs. If they can outperform AMD, Intel could have a really nice comeback. But if not, I think we'll see a big pullback from fans over Intel products. I mean, this is the company's first real revision in years. Of course, Intel's GPUs are another discussion as well. But first, if you're ready to learn computer science, there's no better way than actually doing it. And that's where today's sponsor comes in. Brilliant! The website and app that's made specifically to teach the STEM field, and they're built from this very principle. There's no memorizing formulas or learning endless facts. Just pick a course you're interested in and learn by doing. Plus, there's something for everyone. From learning the basics of computer science all the way to neural networks, and Brilliant is constantly adding more, along with daily challenges to keep you fresh. So what are you waiting for? Join me and a community of 8 million others by visiting brilliant.org slash gamermeld. And the first 200 people who visit the link get 20% off the annual premium today. Next up, we have it. The specs for Intel's upcoming high-performance discrete GPUs just leaked. And it comes right after the recent tweet from one of Intel's own, claiming that their DG2 is quote, right around the corner. Now, this story originally comes from Igor's lab, who's proven himself to be one of the most accurate leakers out there. Either way, starting things off, while the specs he gives should be for both desktop and notebook discrete GPUs, it does look like Intel will be focusing on notebooks first, or at least alongside their desktop variants. Igor claims that Intel has been discussing desktop variants with some of the biggest partners out there, but he isn't sure what came of it. Regardless, these are still discrete GPUs, so it's a big step for Intel. Now let's get to the specs. First up, we have the most powerful variant, which comes with 512 EUs and a whopping 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory across a 256-bit bus. So yes, these are pretty much identical to other leaks we've seen in the past. The difference is that the TDP is for those mobile variants and only for the chip, so it doesn't include memory. He's not sure when it comes to the desktop models. Moving on, we have a 12 gigabyte model with 384 EUs, 8 gigabytes with 256 EUs, and two 4 gigabyte models, one with 196 EUs and one with 128. Now, I didn't go over the clocks because these are the mobile parts. The desktop variants should be much higher. All in all, these are looking like some serious competitors to AMD and Nvidia. Remember that this one actually comes with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. And if Intel's parts weren't really that powerful, they wouldn't need that much. When it comes to the release, it looks like the lower end models will be ready in time for Christmas, with the higher end models releasing a bit later. So with that, I will say that the right around the corner part isn't as close as I would have hoped. As Igor points out, with Pete Brubaker looking for game engineers, Intel sees the importance of entering this market. The issue is that he isn't too sure on the actual desktop parts. Of course, Intel has been promising them, but we shall see. Luckily, there's some great news with today's next story. According to a new video from Cortex, AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which is the company's DLSS competitor, is already in the hands of developers. He actually confirmed it with multiple developers. Not only that, but it doesn't require AI training, yet has very little overhead. According to the video, it's also looking good versus DLSS, but they don't have actual numbers. 
One really weird thing is that it apparently works on NVIDIA's GPUs, though whether AMD will actually let them benefit from it or not is up in the air. The biggest thing here though is that it's apparently set for release in June, so it's right around the corner. Of course, with it not using AI training, I'm not sure how good it will be. Time, as always, will tell. And lastly for today, we have a really big story on AMD's Ryzen 6000 APUs, so let's get right to it. The story originally comes from Executable Fix, who's gotten many leaks right in the past, along with Patrick Schur, who's done the same. Anyway, according to the original tweet, AMD's upcoming Rembrandt-based APUs, or Ryzen 6000 APUs, include RDNA 2 GPU cores with up to 12 CUs, which is huge, because it means AMD is finally done with Vega. Plus, they're moving straight to RDNA 2 instead of playing around with first gen. This is probably thanks to Intel's push in graphics, though they do show RDNA 2 on an older roadmap. Not only that, but Patrick Schur adds that the laptop versions come with support for 8 PCI Express 4.0 lanes. What's more is that Executable Fix claimed the desktop APUs will likely be the same configuration. Not long ago, he also mentioned that these APUs are based on 6 nanometers Zen 3 Plus, which is really interesting, because when we look at this roadmap that's been slowly leaked out over time, we can see that it claims Rembrandt would be 6 nanometers and it includes RDNA 2 based GPUs. It doesn't call it Zen 3 Plus, but that could have easily been named after this was made. Plus, it's just the name, so who cares? Either way, given this has been so accurate, I'm starting to think that Desktop Warhol is coming, but like I recently suggested, it's going to be more of an XT variant. And that's interesting because it could mean the Ryzen 6000 APUs will be the next big buy until Zen 4, given they're on a slightly better node. Not only that, but these upcoming APUs should offer a major jump in iGPU performance, which could be great for those waiting on GPU prices to finally drop. Fingers crossed. So while that does it for today, are you excited for AMD's upcoming APUs or are you more hopeful about Intel's GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Brilliant, they really are awesome. And as always, have a great day.